Hey everyone, so after my last talk at PancakesCon, I had a lot of people DM me asking about what I did after I got a username, or what my first steps were, or some more explanation on Bloodhound. So today I thought I'd give kind of a crash course on getting it set up quickly, and how I use it, what you can find, and some of the options within it. So I've got Snap Labs, and we're looking at this Eagle Bank template. So we're going to start over here at this Kali machine, it's a fresh install Kali. So we're going to start to finish set up Bloodhound, enumerate the domain, and then see if we can maybe get a pivot off of it within our time frame. Let's go to our systems. We're going to launch Kali. And Snap Labs uses guacamole, which is like browser-based VNC. It makes it super easy to find and access everything. So we'll go ahead and get one terminal window open here, and we'll go ahead and open another one. We're going to start with app-git install bloodhound. It's so going to pull down the bloodhound binaries as well as the neo4j binaries. And while that's kicking off, we're going to do pip install bloodhound. So there are four ways to capture data in bloodhound. Sharphound is the actual collector that's going to pull the data for you from Active Directory. There's sharphound.exe, sharphound ps1, Azure Hound to actually pull from Azure AD, and there's Bloodhound Python, which will actually work on your uh, Linux clients. So you don't have to use that weird run as command or compromise a Windows box in order to make it work. While this is installing over here, we'll go ahead and do some domain enumeration. So when I first land on a network, whether it be a VPN connection or however we actually get on the network, I start with figuring out what my IP address is. 10.10.0.17. My next step is to cat etsyresolver.conf. And this will give me the DNS server as well as the domain and the search domain. I have very rarely run into instances where DNS has been separate from LDAP. And so if you can find the DNS host, you can normally find where LDAP is. So using that information, we're going to go ahead and just do a quick nmap-p port 389. If you're trying to fly under the radar, I highly recommend very targeted nmaps. So instead of scanning a range, try doing a single port and a single specific host. So here we'll do 10.10.24.37. When I scan a larger range, I usually do a grep for open. So I'm looking for open ports and then dash B, anything before the word open for four lines. And that gives me a nice, pretty output on my end map. So now I have a host name, I have the domain, search domain, as well as the name server IP. So that's what we're gonna need, and as well as a username and password. Bloodhound's not gonna work without a username and password, but any user can enumerate LDAP. So we'll start with setting up Neo4j. So we'll do Neo4j console. So this is going to build out the back end as well as spin up the web server we're eventually going to log into to build our database. Okay, both enabled on localhost, and now we can browse out to that. I like to rename my tabs in order to keep up with everything. Make sure I don't accidentally kill Bloodhound or Neo4j, especially if I'm going to be working from them very heavily in an engagement. I'll do the same thing with Responder as well. Okay, username and password. The default here is going to be Neo4j and Neo4j. It's going to prompt you to reset the password. Go ahead and change that password. And we're all set. Now we can fire off Bloodhound. So here you'll log in with the password that you just set on the database. Go ahead and save that if you care to, and we'll log in. All 
All right, and now for the next part, actually collecting the data. So we're gonna do bloodhound dash Python. Start with your username dash u. We're gonna use RP for Robert Paulson dash P for password. His password was winter 2022 bang dash DC. This can be the IP address of the FQDN. So we're gonna grab that from here. We're going to specify a name server. And this is going to be IP address based. And dash C for collection method and all. Okay, so we found the Active Directory. There's the domain. Two domains in a forest. Found 12 computers, 667 users querying the computers, and we skipped enumeration for a few of them, not a huge deal. Do ls here, we should see our output files. So we'll grab our files now, should be in root. Looks those are mostly finished. Got the users. Okay, now that those are all finished, you can take a look at your database stats. 134 relationship, 136 ACLs. It doesn't have any users at the moment. Let's refresh that. Okay, 662 users. Node information will let you actually dial into very specific users. So if I want to look, for instance, at B, let's see, Blaze. Or domain admins. This will show me the node information for domain admins. Uh, direct members, unrolled, first degree memberships, and then first degree local admin. Now moving to analysis. Uh, lots of really easy pre-built queries. So find all domain admins. You'll have to change some of the settings over here. And you'll need to change your edge display and your node label display. And now we can see all users that are part of domain admins. Something that I like to add on to my Bloodhound query is custom queries. Uh, you can build your own, but I found that uh, my favorite one's gonna be from Compass Security. So we'll make a change here. Actually, should air out, yeah. C slash CD root. that okay and that's correct now and if we scroll down to our custom queries we should be able to hit refresh here and now we have all of these options uh, one I like to go to right away is all users with password not required we don't have any there Let's see if there's any with password or all users with password and AD those are easy ways to find targets and then to actually figure out where I want to go if I have nothing from there. I use the find shortest path to domain admins. With this being a fresh domain and not a lot of logins, we'll see if there's anything for shortest path to domain admins. Okay, and it looks like it's just the list of compromised admins. So that's everything to get you up and running on Bloodhound. You can play around with it. Uh, I highly recommend getting some sample data. You can generate your own. 
or using Snap Labs to actually build it out. Uh, thanks so much for your time.